Hello and welcome to the continuation of my video about this Cambridge Audio Deck Magic 2 deck. Well, don't dismiss it, don't dismiss it because it is a, a very good unit. For starters, it has been, uh, it says on it at the back, it says that the digital to analog wizardry was done in conjunction with Pink Triangle. And if you look at the diagram, it does say here, Copyright of John Wesley. John Wesley was a principal designer for Pink Triangle. So it is basically a Pink Triangle designed DAC. And, um, and further to this, if you look what it has been used in, um, turn the light off so there's no reflection, we have an audio innovation. Uh, the next one is Audio Maker, a couple of Audio Makers. Then Audra about few Cambridges there, CEC, couple of CEC players, Conrad Johnson, some Herman Cardell, Micromegas, I see Micromegas is in them, Mission, Cyrus, Perot, so it's all good company for that chip. So um, what was wrong with it? What was wrong with it? Uh, the customer said, oh look, uh, maybe one channel doesn't work as well and also previous owner disabled one of the digital inputs, so the CD and that input. It. To my mind, why would why would the Z be one of the inputs improve sound quality? They are next to each other and they're just switchable with a um, you know with a switch there with just DC. I mean, that's why would it be better? So, quick look on the internet and always have a look at those things on the internet. Somebody says about some improvement. It is just a failure. What happens in those units, there's a chip there, there's a receiver chip, that when you unplug the, ray, uh, the unit, when you unplug the input, when it's on, it just blows that chip and blows one of the inputs, the one that was unplugged from. Um, this is mainly happens in Texas Instrument chips. So I've ordered some, one parcel was lost, the second parcel arrived in different form factor and after several months I received five of them. You can see that how squashed they were. I, I fixed one and of course the one in the thing but this is how you get things in mail these days. So but that was just one thing. The thing just didn't work so I took last time some pictures and these are interesting ones. These are interesting ones you'll see because this I, I basically recapped it. This is what happened. You can see some cups are just blown to sides and four of them lost a positive leg. This is how, how they look, uh, uh, you know, they're just uh, so badly affected that um, you, you can see it sort of close up. And of course, some yeah, I normally don't recap things if they're good, but look at that. This is a capacitor that measures as a 12 ohm, 12 meg, mega ohm resistor, not even capacitor. This one says no and no da damaged part. That one, 3300 microfarad reads at 220 microfarad. You know, it's just awful. You can see what happens there. So, so this unit is totally recapped now. And um, it, it is very hard to work on, you know, because of the density. Density, you can see there is like, uh, I've counted 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16 regulators. Maybe, maybe there is like a couple of other resistors, maybe 14 regulators. But look at the design. The main centers there and the cables in big bunch go as far away as you can from a DAC. Three transformers, three separate transformers, you know, they are far away from the board so no hum enters the board. Proper balance execution with two DAC chips, um, you know, it is dense, but that means that the board is small. I, I had great difficulties finding out um, when I was doing some measuring and troubleshooting to actually putting a probe anywhere because, you know, uh, there's so many components in such a small space. But uh, all well, that ends well. And, um, and I have an, even another one of those, which is a CD6, Cambridge Audio CD6, which is a, also a CD player. 
that features um, that very board inside. So available as a DAC. There is a sp separate transport for this, but there's also two of them uh, available as a DAC. So I really like the sound of it. I'm going to have some listening sessions now, and um, I even put a bid on eBay on a faulty transport. Maybe if I buy this faulty transport, we we'll have a combo. But anyway, don't dismiss something just because it only costs a couple of hundred bucks. Because a lot of those things um, are very, very good. And, and Cambridge Audio is particularly a company that you get a lot of value for your money. There are a lot of companies that there is good $300 worth of components in $10,000 unit. But this, you know, is, you get a whole lot more than you pay for. This is just packed full of value and, and, and proper engineering and design. That's all folks, until next time, bye.